Charlton was absolutely essential. If I hadn't gone up to see Charlton, then none of the rest would have happened the way it did. They gave me work when I didn't have it. That's where it all began in, the, in, in Charlton. Charlton was a stepping stone. You want me to get into the whole thing about how I heard Charlton was a front for the mob? Management there was, I think, questionable at times at best. They, ooh, they were no good, they were mean. I think there was a matter of, you know, Right hand not talking about to the left hand. These two gentlemen met in jail. They put together this company called Charlton because both of them had a son named Charles. And then when they got out, they started publishing. At one point, they actually did have to move the comics operation into a bowling alley. Suddenly you hear a strike and somebody going, yeah! <laughs> you know? Trump was a sidewater of a sidewater, and they were out there doing their thing and nobody was paying any attention. Charlton was just a hodgepodge of weird titles. It was the three-legged dog of comics. Guys were, were free to do really whatever they wanted within the boundaries of, you know, good taste in the comics code. C-A-T-A-P, yes, cheap. They were cheap. Hell yes, they're cheap. What they needed was carbon-based life forms who knew how to type. I don't know how much I should be saying about this. Charlton was selling some of their characters to multiple people. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Well, I'd be willing to confess to a felony on camera. Sure. The printing press that they had was used to print cereal boxes, which is a whole different process altogether. Pretty was horrible. At Charlton, we were getting four bucks a page. Would you believe I was getting $8 a page? But there was a little bit of less quality, I'd say, when you got that Charlton book. Paper was much lower quality than anybody else was using. You could smell them beginning to decay even as they were rolling off the presses. They decided to shred tons of archival comic book pages. Somebody just throwing out these original pages because they couldn't possibly conceive of them being valuable. The cover might not be as slick or glossy as the Marvel or the DC one. Or you'd pick up a comic book and the wrong insides would be in the cover. Beautiful artwork. They laid on the floor so the guy painting the seal didn't drip paint on the floor. And if it was a bad snowy day, they would throw them down on the floor so it would absorb all the slush. <laughs> it's, a, it's something out of a sitcom, which I suppose is why you're making this documentary. Charlton has its place and, and deserves to be remembered. There was a creative, powerful force that lived at Charlton Comics, and it was producing top quality work. I loved working for Charlton. I could have used more money. There wouldn't be a Watchman if it wasn't for the Charlton characters. I think Charlton should be uh, proud of the stuff they put out. It showed in the work. I mean, some people were busting their butts and coming out with amazing, amazing stuff. I'm perfectly willing to say sometimes you really do win the lottery, and I did. Mm -hmm.